This episode of the Jesse Blake Sports Report is brought to you by Papersnaildesigns.com. That's paper snail designs.com and yes i did say snail because the logo for paper snail merch is is a snail it's a cute little snail and i gotta tell you about paper snail designs it's a company started by jasmine hall out of calgary alberta and it's a way for jasmine who's a graphic designer to showcase our art she's decided to do it through clothing and they sell t-shirts hoodies, snapbacks, and some of their designs also come in little cute stickers. And the paper snail designs, if you haven't seen them places, just check them out. They're these adorable little snails and they come in super comfy hoodies and t-shirts. And as a graphic designer, Jasmine just wants an outlet for people to see her different designs as she works her way through the industry. And what better way to do it than sharing snug clothing through an adorable snail so go to paper snail designs.com and use the code sdpn you'll get 15 percent off of your order that's paper snail designs.com 15 percent off of your order with the code sdpn check it out the jesse blake sports report with jesse blake the Toronto Blue Jays have ended their seven-game losing streak. Yes, on Tuesday night, the Toronto Blue Jays, after losing three games to the Boston Red Sox, three games to the Cleveland Guardians, and then one more to the Boston Red Sox on Monday. That's seven straight losses. They finally won a game, defeating the Boston Red Sox 9-4 to at Fenway Park. And it was a really good game. Before we get to the main issue that we got to talk about today, and that's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. eventually signing with the New York Yankees, um, before we get to that, let's just talk a little about the game tonight. It was a good game. It was a good game to watch if you're a Jays fan. They won 9-4. to four. They put up the crookedest number. They put up seven in the second, the third inning. Uh, they bat around the order. It was fabulous to see a couple news and notes from the game. Vladdy had two errors. Not great. His fielding uh, needs concentration, I would say. There was, there was a play in right field where he backed up to go catch a fly ball, and he eventually ended up dropping it. He strayed way too far into right field. And in that moment, it's on George Springer and Vladdy on that fly ball because Springer has to call off the first baseman who's pedaling backwards. You, you, have to, you have to call him off. That's your responsibility as a right fielder, as the guy who's coming forward and can see the ball. You tell him, stop, I got it, and you catch that ball. But Vladdy also can't be straying that far out to catch that ball. So it's on them both. But Vladdy was the one charged with the error because it bounced off his glove and into the field. His second error, though, was simply a concentration error. He was looking to turn a double play at first. Ball was uh, rolling to him, bouncing two hops to him. He goes right under his glove at, because he's trying to make the play, the turn and move to second base to get the to for, get the force out at second before he even catches the ball. So he, he's not concentrating on getting the ball into his glove before he's trying to make the play to second. The ball bounces off his glove. There's an error. Not great. You want to see better fielding from Vladdy for out of this game. But he did hit well, and that's a positive sign because Vladdy has been hitting very well lately. You want some better fielding from your first baseman. A great, I think, a good outing by Kevin Gosman. Like maybe I shouldn't say great, but good outing because he gets you through six innings, which is what you want in a blowout like that. You wish he would have been able to get to seven innings, but like a couple of those those errors led to some extra pitches on his arm. So, eh, it is what it is. Gets through six innings. You save the bullpen a little. You get Trevor Richards out there to, to finish it off. Um, Trevor Richards, no, he, he pitched in the, the eighth inning. Trevor Richards, I just want to shout out. He had a very solid inning that he pitched, two strikeouts in the one inning he pitched. He's been solid all season long. Trevor Richards, solid again this game. And then uh, Chad Green and uh, Brian Little. Uh, sorry, Brendan Little, Brian Little the hockey player. Brendan Little uh, were the other two pitchers who came out in relief and did solid jo- solid work for the Toronto Blue Jays in the game. Good seeing some work done by the relief pitching that has not been solid all season long. I should even, like, Brendan Little got himself into a jam. He walked two batters, and then he, he got Devers to strike out. So it was a great strikeout that he had on Devers, but he also got himself into that situation where he had to have a big strikeout on Devers. So... Good job, Little, getting yourself out of your own jam. Other notes, Bichette's back in the lineup. He's off of the IL after his injury, his quick injury stint. Um, Looked good in the field. Had a very nice play at shortstop. Threw across his body, across the diamond. Hasn't lost a step at short. Fabulous stuff from Bo Bichette. 
hitting eh, no hits, but he did have a walk. Don't let anybody tell you that a walk isn't as good as a hit. He came around to score. He had two strikeouts, but he did have that walk, which is just as good as a hit. And it led to a run, which is positive out of Boba Shett. And the mo- the most important thing I think out of that game and the thing to shout out and just like, hey, let's keep this up is George Springer. George Springer, who had three hits, a home run, three RBI, two RBIs, two RBIs on the day, a strikeout, but like the three hits is so important because all season long, George Springer has been struggling. He's been struggling at the plate and to see him out there, get a home run and then two more hits is just keep it up. Keep it up, Springer. Like that's you win. That's why we pay you the big bucks because we know you can do this. So hopefully, this is the beginning of something good for this Blue Jays lineup. The only way they're going to get back into this playoff race is if they string together a winning streak here. And let's see if this one game against the Red Sox is the start of something good. To our main story today, which is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and his not shutting down of one day signing with the New York Yankees. And the reason this is news is twofold. One, I I want to just hammer this point home. The Yankees do this all the time. When there is a star player on a team in a market that's not New York, Boston, LA, Chicago, even if it's one of those markets sometimes even, The New York Yankees steal stars, and they've done it throughout their history of their franchise since they've been like the big spending bad Yankees who always win these World Series. And just to name guys off the top of my head, Juan Soto, getting him from the Padres, Giancarlo Stanton, stealing him from the Marlins, getting A-Rod back in the day from Seattle, getting Ichiro from Seattle, getting Johnny Damon from the Red Sox in free agency, getting Jason Giambi at his height. The Yankees do this. They take the stars from the other markets and they just pay them when those big contracts come due. So it worries me when I see Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in headlines in the New York Post about the New York Yankees. This is what happened. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for years has publicly said, I will never play for the New York Yankees. In November 2022, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. said this, I I will never sign with the Yankees, not even dead. And then in April 2023, somebody asked him a question. He followed up with, that's my decision and I will never change that. Like, this is a guy who's just like steadfastly, no, they're not for me. And then Monday to the Spanish outlet, I'm going to butcher this, Virus Deportivo, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. said this, I'm a worker, I'm a professional, and I go out on the field to play. I don't hold back what I said about the Yankees, but what I say is that the organization understands me. I sat down to talk with my dad, with my family, and that's that. Like I tell you, I'm a player, and if a team picks me, or if they do something, it's because they need me. Obviously, and I'll be happy to help any team, but right now, I'm just focused on helping my team and trying to get out of this bad streak. We have a couple important little tidbits. And because it's translated, because it's, it was clearly said in Spanish and then translated to English, it's a little broken. So let's just pick out some of the important things here in this statement by Vladdy. One, I think the most important thing is, I sat down to talk with my dad, with my family, and that's that. I think from that, Vladdy's, I, we can probably extrapolate. His the people around him, his his dad is we all know Vladimir Guerrero Sr. And I assume when he says his family, and that includes people like agents and the people on his team, they told him it's probably not a good idea to be trashing the Yankees while you are due for a giant payday 
a year from now when you are a UFA at the end of the 2025 season? Because there is a possibility with the way the Blue Jays are trending that the New York Yankees may want to offer you the sun and the moon to come play in the Bronx. I think that is what is implied there when he says he spoke with his family. They told them, hey, those things you said in November 2022 and April 2023, you might not want to say those things again because the Yankees could one day want to sign you. And then I think the other thing, number two, is I'm a player. If a team picks me and if they do something, it's because they need me. That's the setting up. That's the setting up of the spin. Vladdy knows that if one day he ever signs with the Yankees, he needs to sit up on that podium and say, and spin it and spin his old comments to, you know, I'm here now and the Yankees want me and they need me and I'm here to play for this team. Forget what I said in the past. That is the beginning of the spin. And it just concerns me because the Yankees do this. Now, do I think Vladdy is going to the Yankees anytime soon? No. Do I think there's a slight possibility that one day Vladdy could be a Yankee if things go south in Toronto? Yes. I 100% think that's a real thing that might happen one day. Do I think it's going to happen anytime soon? No. But it scares me when I hear the man himself leave open the door for the possibility. Everything's always a possibility in pro sports. I understand that. But it hurts a little when I hear it from the man himself leaving open the door. So that's where I'm going to leave you today. Just a little freaked out that one day, hey, maybe the Yankees do the Yankee thing and steal another star from another market and pay him a lot of money. And we are sad as we look at our star in a Yankees pinstripe uniform hit a home run. So that's it for me tonight. Thank you for being here. It could be anywhere in the world that chose to be listening or watching this right now. And I appreciate you for that. Good night from Toronto. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.